Hello and welcome. Um, so thanks for joining us for our first talk today in our colloquium mini series on thermalization and equilibration dynamics. We have five fantastic talks lined up with wonderful speakers. The first will be uh, Maxime Olchani, who will be introduced by my co-organizer, uh, Alyosha Hama. Hi, Alex. Uh, thank you. And hi, Maxine. It's great to have you here. Uh, so let me introduce uh, Maxime Orshani. Uh, first of all, I'm very honored to be a colleague of Maxime at UMass Boston for six years now. And Maxime is a great friend of, and mentor for me. And um, Maxime uh, got his uh, PhD at uh, uh, the Institute of Spectroscopy in Moscow. And then he have postdoc positions at the Colombo Mar Superior in Paris, and then a postdoc at Harvard, then became uh, assistant professor at USC 20, 20 years ago, I think, and then is a full professor at UMass Boston. And uh, he has, uh, many, many uh, research interests. And uh, right now is working on triangular bosonic glitters, uh, experimental proposals uh, to simulate a big crunch, a big bang with uh, 1D bosons. And uh, is working on mesoscopy, shredding their cats. Uh, among the many things he's famous about are, uh, you know, thermalization and equilibration. He's also one of, of the seminal papers in the modern era of thermalization that uh, appeared on Nature and has 2,500 citations or something like that. Uh, so it's my great pleasure to uh, introduce today's colloquium by Maxim. Uh, about the quantum Chirikov criterion as a model. Uh, for a quantum gas. So the floor is yours, Maxim. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Right. So it's indeed, so it, it yeah, let me open a few windows, right. Okay, so just a second, yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm seeing some, yeah, good. All right, so it's indeed, it's a great, I, I, I should just, I saw, a list of speakers aligned, and it's a great, it's a great honor to to speak at this series. Uh, it's 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 really it's a great it's a great meeting, and yeah, I, I really hope it will continue. And um, and so I will, uh, as far as I understand, there will be quite a few graduate and undergraduate uh, students in the room. So I decided to start from. I, I've, I've, I've spent quite a few days in trying to find a good image for quantum Chirikov, uh, for, for, for Chirikov's criterion. And um, I was looking for examples and, uh, and uh, this is where I got to. So I will have an, indeed a lengthy introduction uh, before I tell you about the original results. Uh, so, so first of all, what's what it is a criterion for? So, so Chirikov's criterion, uh, uh, it's a criterion for um, the onset of chaos. It's a particular set of estimates that you can use in order to, in order to predict whether there is a there, there is a chaos in, in in a particular dynamical system. It emerged as a re response to the uh, Fermi Pasta Ulam uh, paradox. Uh, to, to in, in an attempt to, to explain at, at the time already the Kolmogorov Arnold theory existed, but it is uh, it, it is much more rigorous than and much more uh, labor intensive. And so, so Chirikov's uh, criterion is indeed uh, something that you can use as a quick estimate to uh, to see if there is uh, if there is a chaos um, in the system. And so so and. Uh, and the criterion is indeed um, to look at the uh, so-called nonlinear resonances and to see whether they, they, they overlap or not. And if they overlap, then, then this is a signature for the beginning of chaos. And so since we're talking about resonances, so, so the, the story of 
KM and the story of, of chaos in dynamical systems, it started from the question of the stability of the solar system. So, so how come every so often planets come to a resonance? And in this particular case, uh, it's a resonance between uh, Pluto and Neptune. Um, so the, the uh, ratio between the periods of Pluto and Neptune, which is, which is three to two. And how come uh, Neptune never uh, kicks um, Pluto out of its orbit, even though the, the orbits nearly cross. And, and it turns out that it, it does it precisely because there is a resonance. So, so, so Pluto avoids the, the collision by a, about a quarter of its period. And, um, but, but the question is why, uh, why on Earth these resonances are stable, why they don't lead to a, to a complete uh, dissolution of the system, and why these two resonances don't, don't interact interact between themselves and 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 this brought us to uh, to an attempt to understand why the solar system is stable in spite of all the resonances we, we we have there and so there's a next resonance that is also on the sky and you can actually have it see, see it with uh even with with a primitive telescope is a resonance between the three out of four uh, galilean satellites of jupiter so io europa and, and ganymede and uh, the uh, ratio between the periods in this case is four, four, four to two to one. And underneath, there is an, a resonance between the two outer satellites. And so, so this is a two to one resonance between Europa and Ganymede uh, that I was searching for a long time for a, for a most primitive model for, for a resonance. And I thought about uh, about Pluto and Neptune, but it turned out that the story is the story is that it's much more complicated. One needs to introduce more than one degree of freedom per, per planet to explain how come they, even though the gravitation interaction is attractive, um, uh, they uh, these two planets seem to repel each other. In the case of Ganymede and Europa, it's much easier. They 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 resonance bring them in phase, so they and actually they like to be close to each other. And this is, of course, much easier. This effect is much easier to explain using just, just beads on, uh, on, uh, or just beads on, on, a, on a piece of a round string. And, uh, and this is, this is the model I use to illustrate, um, to illustrate what happens. So, okay. So I start from two, uh, two circles. And even though here I am drawing the, an elliptical orbit that, that, is, that is happening in reality, what, what, what this model really is, is, is two uh, circles of wire. One is slightly off center with respect to another and, they have, and, and the beads have a gravitation attraction between them. And what, what I'm plotting here is this gravitation attraction as a function of, um, as a function of the position on the circle of Europa, so, so one of the bids, so, so in, inner bid, and position of Ganymede uh, on, on, its, on its respective circle. And again, so, so there's just two circle orbits shifted, shifted one, one respect to another. Uh, and what we see is not a two to one resonance at all. I mean, what we're seeing is, 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 is actually the very, very dominant uh, one to one resonance. So, so which, is, which is natural because they really want to, due to the gravitation attraction, they really want to be close to each other. And it's pretty hard to believe that, that, that at some stage, so that's the potential. So that at some stage, uh, these planets will move in such a way that uh, will move along this straight line uh, and would we'll, we'll, we'll prefer to stay on this straight line instead of going with, with the main groove. But this is what we have in nature. So we know that, that in nature, Europa and Ganymede are in, in two to one resonance and we want to, want to see, want to understand, um, want to understand why, why that's happening. So in order to, to do that, what we'll do is um, we'll assume that we're already moving with a, with, a, with a high speed along this direction and whatever, and we'll, we'll move along this direction for, for, for some time. So, so if, if, if we are fast, so, so the potential is, is just a small perturbation. And then we may decide to, to actually to time average this potential along, along the unperturbed motion in, along this direction. So, so, so this is not quite a perfect time averaging. So we, uh, in reality, we'll just get a set of stripes, but, but, uh, but just I was doing the Monte Carlo 
averaging of, of this potential. So imagine that these, these stripes are, are straight. So be it as it may, so we already have, we, we get some grooves which are oriented in the, in the two to one direction. And there is, there is some, at least there's some effective potential, time average potential that acts on our system. And it, it, it tries to keep indeed uh, Ganymede in Europa in, in a two, two to one resonance. And there will be a, a trajectory, an approximate trajectory that, uh, that, that, is, that is only seeing, uh, it is, it is only seeing this, this time average, average potential and will be, interested in the relationship between this trajectory and other possible trajectories that would 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 emerge in other models in a model in a model that in, would involve uh, a one-to-one -one resonance so so let's remember remember this so at the moment at the moment what we did is we time averaged our potential our interaction potential along the along the resonant line and we used this time average potential as a model for the for the particle uh, for, for for the motion motion of our system, and we've got this this red trajectory. And of course, an interesting question is, what happens if there is another resonance nearby? And the most prominent resonance, as I said, said is a one-to-one -one resonance. And we can, if we didn't know what the solar system does, uh, uh, if if we were to predict what the solar system does. Would would probably use this resonance as a model, and then do do averaging along this direction and get this set of stripes uh, in the in the in the interaction potential, and we will we would come up with this kind of a trajectory. And then Chirikov's question is: What happens if we compare these two models and pose the question of their consi consistency? And so, and, and the question she poses is exactly this. Imagine I'm moving, uh, so, so imagine I'm, I'm trapped uh, by a two to one resonance. And, and is there any point uh, where my system will get confused and it, it won't know which resonance it belongs to? So we need to, we need to compare the tangential, um, we need to compare the orientation of, of the of the system's velocity and see if there are any points of confusion be between the two resonances. And in this particular case, we can see that, that there is no confusion. So, so, so at, at no point in the red line, there is an inclination of the trajectory uh, which can be shared with, with, with the green line. And, it, and in that case, uh, Churikov would say that, that these two resonances are way, way well separated one from another. They are well isolated. And if, it's, if it so happens that this red trajectory doesn't have any other resonance it can be confused, confused with, then the Chirikov's criterion would predict that this trajectory constitutes a KM torus. The trajectory constitutes a torus, uh, so it constitutes an, a surface in the, in the phase space, which is just a deformation of the original uh, Original uh, integrable integrable torus that is that is that is just um, that is just um, an iso that is just a surface of a constant two original integrals of motion slightly deformed but still topologically equivalent to what we had before the interaction happened. So so again so if there is no other resonance this is like a green resonance. Uh, which can be confused for the motion along along the red resonance, then the red resonance would constitute a good 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 candidate for a for a KM uh, torus for for an unper for an unperturbed uh, for a weakly perturbed trajectory that is not that is not chaotic that is that is still regular and and by the way this this two to one two to one resonance um, two to one resonance between Ganymede and and and, and um, Ganymede in Europa. I mean, I do have a telescope, and I'm seeing it every every, every month or so. I mean, they're still there, so so it, it is pretty it is pretty a pretty stable motion. So so we know that experimentally, right? And so so now I can think about increasing the gravitation constant. So so do, doing something unphysical. So I increase it by a roughly a factor a factor of of ten. So my interaction potential gets stronger, and now. So the the uh, so 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 now I can I can again do again do the averaging, 
and the trajectory gets much uh, gets sharper. So, so if you want the, uh, the, the the period, the spatial period of, of the tra trajectory uh, uh, gets gets denser. And the same thing happens with the one-to-one -one resonance. So trajectory is sharper. And now what happens is, is that if you compare these two approximate theories, and again, so, so those are two sort of approximations. So one approximation assumes that our particle uh, is trapped by the two-to-one resonance. And another theory assumes that it is fully trapped by the one-to-one one -one resonance. The question is, whether whether there could be any point of confusion and whether whether our system can actually decide to jump from one theory to another. And it turns out that indeed there is a point over here where the tangents are equal. And at this and this at this point uh, the system gets gets confused and it can it can actually start switching from one one resonance to another. And this is where according to to, to Chirikov chaos begins. It begins from a mobility in the space of resonances. But if you think about it, mobility in the space of resonances is also mobility in the space of original uh, unperturbed actions. So, so we have this equi energy surface, in this case is, is just a circle. So, so we have an equi, equi energy, equi, uh, original equi energy surface uh, uh, unperturbed. And now we, uh, we got a tool we got a vehicle with which we can move along this equi energy surface, uh, uh, disregarding the original uh, integrals of motion. So, so that's that's how that's how the original integrals of motion get destroyed by 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 having having a possibility of jumping from one one resonance to another. And this is this is um, by far probably. Um, I mean, so 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 this 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 visuals this explanation is. Is my personal invention from the last last three days. I mean, I, I, I there are there are other ways of approaching the Chirikov's uh, criterion, but but all, all of them are identical to what you've just seen. So now I have to explain why we decided to study uh, one-dimensional mass mixtures um, as a, as a tool for studying thermalization. And so let me start from from an article that, that is old and, and well, well forgotten. So by by Huang Wu and, and Christopher Foot, where they analyze uh, uh, a, they, where they analyze a particular statement that appeared in literature uh, uh, before them, and the statement is this: that if you take a three dimensional gas of hard spheres. It, uh, say with three different temperatures uh, along x, along y, and along z direction. So it takes it takes two point seven collisions per particle to thermalize. So so to 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 equalize the, the three temperatures between between three directions. And uh, and what's important is not two point seven, even though it would be nice to have an analytic formula for this two point seven. But what's important is that this number two point seven is e to the order of one. So so it, in three D for hard spheres. It takes about a one collision per per atom to actually to bring to bring the system to a, to a thermal equilibrium, which is understandable because because in two dimensions, uh, so uh, the outcome of a two body collision depends intimately on the value of the what's called impact parameter. So so shift a little a little shift left and right on a on a length scale of. Uh, of, of a two-body cross section, and we'll we'll get a, a completely different different outcome of the collision. So it's no it was, so if you want, you start with two velocities, and we end up with two velocities that have little to do with 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 two previous velocities. I mean, there's there, there still there's still conservation laws, but but the orientation of the velocities is unconstrained. I mean, it it, it loses almost instantly it loses any memory of the of the initial condition because of the randomness in the in the impact parameter. But not so in one dimension. So in one dimension, for two equal masses, all, part, all our particles can do is to exchange their velocities, and uh, and uh, and and this makes thermalization uh, pretty pretty pro problematic because because the, the basically the momentum distribution doesn't doesn't change with time at all. Uh, this is not so. This is not so for two different masses. So with two different masses, uh, 
uh, two particles collide with velocities V and V, but they end up with two, two different velocities. And this gave us an idea that maybe a good, good, good toy model for thermalization is just a one-dimensional mass mixture. It is easier to study. Uh, it is easy conceptually, and and also it is easier to concoct, uh, concoct um, e even toy toy toy, toy models of, of of thermalization. So we started studying it. Original motivation was slightly different. We want to see to see some particular peaks in the relaxation time. So here I'm plotting the relaxation time uh, as a function of the mass ratio. So the peaks are a different story. They're related to, to, to particular uh, reflection group symmetries that, that occur at, at the three-body level. I won't dwell on that. But what's important, so that's, 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 that's a particular three-body collision that, uh, that, is, that leads to a slowdown in relaxation. That's a separate story. But what's important is that on the vertical axis, we still have num numbers of the order of one. So if you have you have a one-dimensional mixture of hard of hard cores with a slight mass defect between them, relaxation time is still of the order of one uh, of one uh, collision per, per atom, and this makes it conceptually close to to a three-dimensional to, to a three-dimensional relaxation. And so so here we're studying a particular measure uh, like the ratio between the force and the and the second moments of the of the momentum distribution and what we're seeing is that it relaxes in, indeed in, 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 one, in one collision time. So we can go in further and we can, we can look at, 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 at the model with two atoms in a box. And conceptually, this kind of toy model is close to the one that is used to study uh, BC, BCS crossover and, and the unitarity and in, in, uh, in spin one half Fermi gases. So, so it was very successfully used by uh, Ivan Kastan, who's who's my mentor, and by Ludovic Prokopenko, who is a close close friend of mine and, and a colleague. Uh, and uh, they qualitatively, so a, a model of one particle in the box uh, plus a uh, plus a delta potential in the middle, uh, qualitatively, it explains all the phenomena that happen in a Fermi gas uh, that that undergoes a BC BCS BCS transition. And so, and so from now on, we just have two particles, two different masses in a box. Uh, and with that, we can go all the way. But, but so the previous, the previous things were covered in two in two papers. So it's a mass, you know, traces for integrability and relaxation in one-dimensional mass mixtures, and the study of particular symmetries that appear at the three and four-body levels that are related to the symmetries of three and four-dimensional icosahedra. So first of all, let's yeah, let's 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 do it, let's let's do it classically. So what we have is, is two two particles, two hard cores with two slightly different masses, moving in in a box, and and so so since they're hard cores, the order is preserved, and effectively it's it's a two dimensional particle, uh, moving in a triangle L. Uh, L uh, 45 45 with, with a side, side side L, but whose mass is not a scalar, but but it but it's a tensor. And so uh, first thing we can do, we can we can actually unwrap it to to a square uh, by flipping. So so we can uh, and, and so what we will get is now a two dimensional particle that moves moves in a square, and there are zones. We, uh, with a sli slightly different val value of of, uh, of of the mass tensor, and so so, but it it is a perturbation. So, so unperturbed motion is just a two-dimensional particle in the box with a normal with a scalar mass, and the perturbation is uh, a slight change in the mass tensor. And finally, so so this is what is usually done. We further unwrap this square to a to an infinite plane. And so by again, again by flipping, and and so so, and now our model is just a free two, two dimensional particle, moving moving with a constant velocity. So that's the unperturbed motion, and then the perturbation is indeed indeed uh, squares uh, with uh, squares with patches with different values of, of of the mass tensor. And so exactly, and in, in the in the case of planet, next thing we do is we take one particular unperturbed trajectory and we time average the perturbation 
in an attempt to get a potential that that is trapping uh, our 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 two dimensional particle along along a particular resonant uh, resonant line. So, so we want to to get an a, a time average potential uh, that acts across the uh, the unperturbed trajectory. And so we can and we'll be searching for resonances. So we'll be searching for for cases when the frequencies of the horizontal and vertical motions they they are in a in a rational relationship uh and 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 so so just to show you that these resonances they they give you something very explicit at the particle level so i've made a few a few homemade movies so in particular if you have a two to one resonance so it will look this way so one to one resonance is just a monopole motion and one to zero resonance is, uh, I would I would say it's a dipole mo motion. And uh, again, those are unperturbed unperturbed motions. So be it as it may. So when we time average, so we choose one particular we choose one particular trajectory. So one particular straight line. We time average. Most of the time, we'll get a constant potential. However. So if the ratio between the horizontal and vertical velocities is a rational number given by, uh, by, a, by a fraction P over Q, where P and Q being mutually prime and also which is specific for billiards. Uh, so, so the uh, P and Q must have an opposite, uh, an opposite parity. So the time average potential is now heavily non-trivial. So, so, so now, now we have, um, so now we have some, some force that is trying to attract our trajectory to uh to a particular to a particular original line uh so so if if this line obeys this this rationality conditions so there is a uh there is um so this is this is the force that keeps uh um that keeps uh europe and ganymed in a two to one ratio and doesn't allow them to go for for other ratios so so that's that's the analog right and so i should probably just let me just show you uh, uh one thing okay so 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 now it, it, so, so what we just got is this so if if the tangent if the uh if the um if the uh, if the tangent of this angle, so so of the uh, of the original trajectory with the horizontal, is a rational number with opposite parities of the numerator and denominator, there will be a force that uh, time average force that that will try to keep our particle on this straight line. And and next thing we'll be studying is whether uh, whether again there is any there could be any confusion between which 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 of the two resonant lines our system belongs to okay so, so this will take some time just a second I, I i should find a way to skip it right okay okay go 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 yeah we're almost done right okay so so next so next what what, what will be happening i'm 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 going through a through a derivation so if if some steps are not are not that that clear i mean so so there is a uh it's it's i mean the, there are some there are some formulas be, be behind it but i'll try i'll try my best okay so so first what i do is i go to the momentum space to the unperturbed momentum space so, so p1 and p2 and generally speaking this would be two unperturbed actions canonical actions action one and action two so if I fix the energy, so my unperturbed Hamiltonian just the kinetic energy, so so equi energy line would co would constitute uh, so so would constitute a, a circle in this uh, momentum momentum space. So it's only it's only uh, one eighth of a circle. Uh, the reason being that that in this map we had to we had to fix. Uh, the original orientation of the velocity to the to, to 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 this sector. I mean, it's it's a price to pay uh, when we when we switch from boxes to, to 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 free particles. But this is so so this is the so so this is given the energy conservation. 
this is the available, available space in the space of the unperturbed actions or in the space of the uh, unperturbed momenta. So, so this, is, this is where our uh, system is allowed to go if there were no any other conservation laws in the system. But, but we, if we don't have a perturbation, P1 and P2 are conserved separately. And this means that if there's no perturbation, if we start at some point characterized by an angle to the horizontal set of star, we'll stay there forever. And the question I pose is this. So, so imagine I have a, a point set of star. So, and imagine there is a particular resonance characterized by, by P, P over Q. So, so, so this, uh, this angle is, is a Russian, rational angle. This resonance has a width that we've just computed on the, on the previous slide. So will the set of star belong to this resonance? And the bigger question is, whether it will belong to any resonance. And then an even much bigger question is whether it will belong to, to more than one resonance. And, and the moment we can show that, that every point theta star belongs to at least two resonances. So, so according to the Chirikov's criterion, we, we, would claim, we would claim chaos because, because at, at, this point, at this point, every single point is confused of which of the two pairs of P1, P2 it belongs to. And this is, this is already, uh, so, so this is already not, not, not quite a regular motion. So what I do next, and I thought I've changed, changed colors, but I didn't. Um, so what I do next is I'm already assuming that I'm sitting on the, uh, on the equi energy line. Uh, and, and, and now I start analyzing the actual resonances. Okay, so, so, so this is a space of resonances. This is the numerator in the ratio between the frequencies uh, or velocities, and this is the denominator in the, in, in, in the, space, of, uh, in the space of frequencies or velocities in this particular case. So, so in order for a particular resonance, and so allowed resonances are gray or colored, I will explain in a second what, what color, colors mean. So as you can see, grayed on colored points, so they, A, so, so first of all, the uh, P and Q in their case are, are mutually prime and they have opposite parity. So those are allowed resonances. So in order for an allowed resonance to involve an initial condition theta star, this resonance must lie inside this gray area. So, so, so there is a, there's a straight line oriented at the very same theta star as, as in, in P1, P2, P2, P2 space. And the width of the stripe is proportional to the square root of epsilon. And square root, square root of uh, and epsilon is a perturbation, the relative mass effect. And by the way, this is very typical of this chaotic uh, science that the square root of epsilon appears as, as a width of a resonance. But we'll see that, that under quantization, we get, we get new, new exponents. So, so, so and, and what you can see is, is that, generally speaking, so, so we can we can we can go up as much as we want in in P and Q, and we'll definitely find one, two, uh, or even infinite many resonances that that lie inside. And there's uh, there's a nice science about about the density of of being mutually prime. In case you didn't know, if you find two integers on the street, uh, the probability of uh, them to be mutually prime uh, is uh, is six over pi squared. So so this is this is what you would use to. In any case, classically it seems like it seems like every single initial condition will belong to belong to many resonances, and 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 definitely we won't have any regular any re, any regular motion. Whether it's fully ergodic, ergodic is a separate story, and uh, and Guru Kusati is in the audience, and so so the so so it might be not fully ergodic, but definitely not regular. And so a big question is, of course, uh, yeah. So a big question is. Is of course, I mean, where is the quantum? And it turns out that that quantum enters at the very last stage. So quantum enters, ay, ay, ay. quantum enters as a condition. Uh, I've lost, I've lost one, one, one thing, but I'll, I'll, I'll show you in a second. Uh, to you in a second. Quantum enters as a condition that uh, if something identifies as a resonance it must occupy at least h bar square in the 
two-dimensional face space, or given the fact that that our our angles are constrained by the um, our angles are, are constrained by 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 two pi, in the space of actions, it must must occupy uh, uh, a face space. Uh, in in space of the quantum numbers, it must occupy a, a, a space uh, with an area great greater than one. So so if something that would classify as a nonlinear resonance, legitimate nonlinear resonance classically, quantum mechanically, it would just be an imperturbed space. And somehow in the process of editing, I lost a circle over here. So so what what quantum does? It says that besides uh, besides finding, so when we search for the nonlinear resonances that lie inside the gray stripe, also in the space of PQ, they must lie inside a particular circle. So, so we we can only consider resonances which are which uh, with p square plus q square less than, less than a certain number, and the radius of the circle is scales as the perturbation to the power one force. And so, resonance must occupy more than one eigenstate. And this gives us what we may call the quantum post-selection rule. So uh, we go through the whole Chirikov's science as if everything was classical. And then in the very last moment, we select the resonances for whom, for whom P square plus two square is less by a certain number. And this number, as you can see, is just the ratio between uh, between the energy and the zero zero point energy in the ball and uh, and this no other strong than a particular number. And this number is, is now the ratio between zero point energy and the, and the energy to a very slow power to, to, to a power one third. So so it's it's so so which means that that we can we can go. I mean so so it the, this rule would apply even at high at classical energies, but but there will be a threshold value of the permission strength that uh, below which there won't be any 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 thermalization. And so in. So our conclusion is that in the two body one in the two body one dimensional mass mixture thermalization starts uh, when the perturbation strength with the relative mass effect exceeds exceeds a particular threshold, which is the ratio between the zero point energy and the energy to the power one zero. So is it is it all is it all real? Is it all real? So, so we take we take the actual the the, the actual two two. Two particles, so so we we diagonalize uh, two particles with two slightly different masses. We diagonalize them, and what we're looking at, so we're, we're plotting here them here to, together with classical, so so just classically predicted on the pencil with a pencil of paper, classically predicted uh, nonlinear resonances with their positions and widths, uh, uh, post selected according according to the quantum rule. But but again, I mean all these 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 uh, colored lines, they were just obtained um, on, on a sheet of paper. There's no there's no numerics in them, and so for this particular equi energy surface, so this particular value of energy, the critical value after which the chaos uh, chaos should start is uh, is zero point zero point zero zero six. So this is this. So this for this start uh, equi energy surface, uh, the chaos should should, should, should start should, should start there, and as you can see, just visually, you can see that that indeed. So the resonances and what I'm plotting here is the the spread, the inverse participation ratio of the uh, of the unperturbed eigenstates over the perturbed states, and you can you can see that that so there's a, this classical prediction with the green. Green resonance, which is two to one resonance, like for Europe and 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 and, and Ganymede, and you can see that the quantum mechanically you you start start seeing a stripe. Uh, so 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 there is some some correspondence, and later on you can see the blue one, which is two, which is three to one, and so on and so forth. And then when the resonances fully overlap, so there is no undestroyed, unperturbed, uh, unperturbed tori. There is no no unperturbed. Uh, uh, and to the quantum states. 
And so we can see it with a naked eye, but also, but also what, what we can do is, and this is the meaning of the, of the colors. So these are the resonances that we have. So we can see it with the naked eye, but we, go to, we can also do the level spacing statistics. And what we're seeing is that, that, that indeed at epsilon 0 0.06, the, uh, the transition from the Poisson level statistics to the, to the wigner dyson level statistics is, is, is complete. So, so there's something in it. But again, we predicted it with a pencil of pa in, and paper. I mean, so, so all, these, all these colored lines, they're just, they're just, um, they're just something that, that, that don't, doesn't require any numerics, not to speak about quantum numerics. So we can analyze one particular, one particular set of resonances. So now what I'm plotting is in fact perturbed states decomposed over the, over the unperturbed. So we look at, look at for one particular value of the, of the perturbation strengths, I have three neighboring states. Two of them are destroyed. So according to the classical theory, they should be destroyed. Uh, uh, and quantum mechanical, they, 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 they destroyed. So they decomposed over this, this, this one consists of three unperturbed states. This one consists of, of three or three or more. And there is one which is in between them. So in between this and that, there's one which is, which still pretends to be, to be unperturbed. And, uh, and the process of gaining a mobility in the phase space is in fact is a process of, of plugging the, uh, the holes and otherwise known in, as KM tori. So, so, so two neighboring resonances, they, they fatten and they start overlapping and they, they plug, plug the holes. And, and the moment you plug the hole, you, would, you will gain the mobility, you will gain an ability of moving from here to there before it was forbidden, before, before it, was, it was completely forbidden to, 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 to go from this part of the phase space to that part of the phase space. And now increase the strength of the perturbation, increase the, the, uh, the, um, the uh, mass disparity, and the plug is completely, completely filled. And now, and now what we're seeing is, is that, that uh, we can, we can, we can, we're able now to move from one, this part of the phase space to, to this part of the phase space, quantum mechanically as well. So all this is published in this, in this, um, in this preprint, so just well, since it was a, a, a toy model, so what we will infer from this toy model is that in a one dimensional many body mass mixture, there will be transition from thermalization, non thermalization at the relative mass defect, which is the ratio between the Fermi energy and the, and the, and the temperature to the power one third. Uh, it would be nice to verify that, that, that numerically. And so, and this is, uh, and this is, this is our, this is our many body prediction. And, uh, and in summary, yeah, in summary, so we are grooming the one dimensional two mass mixture as a short range interacting paradigm, uh, as a paradigm for the short range interacting interaction system. So, so as, as thermalization studies go. So uh, we are trying to extend the Chirikov's criterion for overall overlapping resonances to the quantum domain. And we realized that, that we have to introduce quantum only at the very last moment. And so in, for two bodies in the, in the box, there is this kind of threshold for, for, for quantum chaos. Uh, so it's, it's the rate of energy and energy to the power and third. And in a many body mi mass mixture, uh, uh, mass effect should exceed uh, the ratio of Fermi energy and the temperature to the power one third. And uh, these are so these are the sponsors. And uh, thank you very much. And it took forty minutes. Thanks, Maxime, for a great talk. Yeah. So there's plenty of time for some questions. Well. I don't know, may, may, may say Please something? Please go ahead, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Maxim. I like your talk <laughs> today. So I want just to mention one point about the level statistics. So uh, one open, you know, that the Winder Dyson distribution uh, doesn't contain, uh, is not related to the degree of exponential instability. It doesn't contain the Lyapunov of exponent. So you expect to be valid also, if the system is zero Lyapunov exponent, but is as mixing property. But one question that uh, 
is still open, and actually it is some time we are working on this, is uh, what are the statistical property you need in order to have um, the distribution? So the question, the one main question is, uh, is ergodicity sufficient to have Vinderdazion distribution or not? Or for example, you need mixing property. And uh, so this is a question which is, is not clear. And uh, actually we are working on this and um, our latest result, uh, uh, which you need to verify, is seems that there is a difference. If the system is only ergodic, you have some distribution, which is certainly not Poisson, but also is still not Wiener Dyson. And uh, to have a clear Wiener Dyson, it seems you need mixing properties. So ergodicity may not be sufficient. But as I said, this is still uh, open and uh, should be made clear. Uh, okay. okay, this is just a comment I wanted to make, yeah. And to make sure, so uh, your analog of the quantum ergodicity is eigenstate normalization, right? No, no, oh. I, I'm, I'm just speaking about the level of statistical distribution. Oh, so, so, you're, so, so you're, when you when say mixing and ergodic, that's mixing and ergodic I mean in the underlying classical system. In the, yes, yes. Okay, Suppose okay. you take a classical system, which okay. is only ergodic and non mixing. Okay. Then there is a question. If you look at the level of statistic, can you show that it will obey Wiener Dyson distribution or not? Yeah. Uh, or yeah, you need mixing yeah. property. So as I said, this is, is an open question. And uh, our orientation now is, is that you need mixing. It's, ergodicity is not sufficient. So okay. if you have a transition to Wiener uh, if you have a transition to ergodicity in quantum mechanics, you don't know whether you will have Wiener Dyson or not. I mean, you can have ergodicity and still not Wiener Dyson. Yeah, yeah. Do, so, what's 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 your what's your toy model? Mushroom billiard? Uh, well, no. Uh, well, to show this, you need very accurate. Uh, no, 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 no. Mushroom billiard. You, to show this, you need very accurate. Uh, you know, for example, numerical computation to see deviation, and uh, the model in which we are doing we are looking is uh, a kind of um, triangle map. You see, you can have a map. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which, which are only ergodic or which are mixing. Both with zero Lyapunov exponent, but they have you know different property. In one case, we have mixing and diffusion behavior, in the other, you can have only ergodicity. Okay, okay. yeah, so this is uh, what the, the comment I wanted to make. Yeah. Right. Thank you. No. Other questions? Yes, please. Uh, hello, yeah. Uh, very, very elementary question. Uh, maybe it has been already discussed by the previous questioner. In uh, thermalization, ultimately, what I remember in the background is the uh, Boltzmann distribution. And in chaos, I do not know what kind of distribution would you have. And then how do you make sure that in some limit it goes to Boltzmann distribution. Yeah, for, right. For for, uh, for me, Boltzmann and uh, so for me, Boltzmann and thermalization they are equivalent. So if you have if you have a low density low density gas of, of hard cores, uh, it will converge to a Maxwell -Bolt Boltzmann distribution if if it thermalizes. So so I wouldn't distinguish between them. It's uh, I in, in in gravitational systems it's different because those are long range and and, and actually the the uh, there are subtleties there but no there's no for me there's no distinction that, that's my answer. May I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. It was a very, very nice talk, and in particular, the, the, your effort to explain the resonances and when they overlap or not, for me, was very, very instructive. And I have one question, which uh, if you could comment in the, what is the difference more about this resonance overlap and uh, studying the Lyapunov exponents. and because you never mentioned this Lyapunov exponent in your talk. Uh, yes, I, do, I don't think 
I mean, Leia may even know infinitely more on, on, on the subject, but I, I don't think Chirikov's criterion can be, uh, Chirikov's science can be used to study Leponov's exponents. I mean, all it studies is the principal mod mobility uh, in the phase space. More to the point, so uh, there's, um, there is a definition of organicity in, in landau lifshitz which is not, uh, which is not the, the common definition of organicity, which is that every point uh, in the phase space can be uh, visited uh, uh, infinitely close to it uh, given given any time. So, so Chirikov is only about this. It's even it gives you it something which is even weaker than ergodicity. It doesn't even it did, doesn't predict uh, that you will populate the phase space uh, with a uniform density. It only tells you that 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 there's no obstacles, principal obstacles for you to get from this set of two momenta to that set of two momenta, uh, given, given the energy conservation. So, so it's, 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 I mean, this is all the, it doesn't address mixing. It doesn't address uh, uh, the non-zero Lepinov exponents. And if you ask me, it doesn't even address the ergodicity as we know it, which is the um, the infinite time average equals to the to the ensemble average, it it simply tells you that that there is no forbidden, there is no impenetrable walls in the space of original integrable in the original integrable actions that you cannot cross, and that's that's it. Yeah, uh, I totally agree with this. Yeah, indeed, the yeah. model you consider is zero upon of exponent, so it doesn't have that. Yeah, Chirico yeah. transition is a transition to you know to, to mixing to diffusive behavior. Yeah, indeed, yeah. indeed, yeah. indeed, indeed. There's nothing to do with the upon of exponent. No, 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 we didn't. Yeah, I mean the the thing the thing I found amazing though is is that. Again, I just I have like two two page two page long mathematical code that that, that draws all, all these uh, classical nonlinear resonances, and they and I'm seeing quantum mechanical structures that that it's and again this two page code is not is not numerics. It's just it just I was lazy not to derive them on with with a pencil pen, pencil and paper, and, and you can see structures. So, I mean, you, you can see these resonances in in quantum mechanical eigenstates. And so, so they are, uh, uh, in short, I mean, the, 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 uh, the amazement was how far into quantum you can go with the classical, classical Chirikov's criterion. I mean, it's almost everything is, is fully translatable to, to, to the quantum language. So it's only at the very last stage then when you realize that your, your resonances must be Quantum fat, quant quantum significant. So you, then you realize that there is a there is a rendering in in the phase space uh, with with the oversize of a, of of h bar, and um, uh, so that's very last thing. Nate, yeah, you have a question? Or oh no, no, I fo I'll follow up with you later. I think some of this needs to be worked into a revision to that archive preprint. But all right, we'll, we'll okay. talk later. Yeah, I have yeah, to yeah, next yeah, 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 yeah. We will, yes. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm welcoming questions from, from courses as well. So, so most, most of them, are uh, all of them are here. Any other questions? I have a-, a Yeah, brief, I think I do. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Yep. Yeah. So, okay. so the, the, the classically the Chirikov criterion was uh, uh, a, a precursor to the more general KM, KAM theorem. And uh, that, that, you know, in the quantum domain uh, is kind of elusive. It's not very clear what it would mean. So now, now you, you formulated the quantum Chirikov criterion, and do you think this gives us a roadmap to a quantum KAM? I need, um, I need, I, I would need to, I would need to know classical KM better to to answer your question. So I, I perfectly 
I'm perfectly aware of the formulation, but I the methods that 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 I used for for proofs. I mean, it's not even power pole or expansions. I mean, it's this Newton's expansions and so on. Of course, uh, honestly, I don't know. I hope so. Okay, so so that's so that was that was the intent, but it may so happen that that it may so happen that the methods needed uh, to to actually to address uh, to address KM are, are much more classical. So so the, the estimates are easy. So 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 it may or may not. I hope so, but I don't know. Okay, so one thing that I kind of missed in. So it, it is not clear to me in your presentation is can you establish this criterion for a purely quantum system, not something that comes from quantizing a classical system? It's not clear to me if you can. I'm, uh, uh, I, I'm sure I can. So, so give me, give me quantum. So give me quantum system with. Uh, uh, with a little, with a little clearly, clearly, uh, uh, clearly given Liouville set of integrals of motion, I can build this theory. So I don't need, I don't need a classical analog behind it. I just, I mean, all all I will do uh, again. So I will, mm -hmm. uh, uh, right. So so all all I need to do is. Um, in any case, yes. So, so the answer is yes. I will. I will be able to build it. Oh, thank you. If you are thinking about spins and stuff, yeah, we can we can try something of that sort. Yeah, yeah. Or, or qubits rather. Okay, so I think it may be time to thank Maxime once again for a great talk and for kicking off our uh, colloquium series. Next week, we'll have Ehud Altman speak about face, faces and phase transitions of information flow in quantum circuits, same time. So um, see you all next week, I hope. And one more thing, this talk has been recorded and I will post pertinent information on the Colloquium series' webpage. All right, yeah. thank you all. Thank you so much and thanks Bye. for organizing Bye. it. Right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks again.